So now that you know how to uh, eat leftover cold lasagna, I'm getting a lot of questions about how you make lasagna. I, I guess I just assumed that was intuitive, but I, I guess I can make that episode too. On today's episode of Cooking for Kyle, we will be making lasagna. So lasagna is pretty much the same thing no matter what you do. Um, you always have noodles and a sauce and then mozzarella and usually some kind of a creamier kind of cheese. And uh, the sauce and the creamy kind of cheese are what are different. So um, you can change your meats, you can change for the creamy, you can use cottage cheese for the creamy ricotta. Uh, cre my mom used cream cheese, Philadelphia. Yeah, Philadelphia cream cheese with mixed with eggs, which is pretty good. I'm gonna use, well, spoilers. This episode is sponsored by Whitaker B. We're going to start frying up some Italian sausage or for the hamburger. I prefer uh, Italian sausage or actually I prefer a mixture, but uh, some people in our family don't like the Italian sausage, so I'm going to make uh, two lasagnas, one with uh, Italian sausage and one without. Once the Italian sausage starts getting brown and hot a little bit, just put a little water in the stew so it just sort of Get the inside a little bit it's chopped up. I don't like to do it whenever they're raw. It's a big greasy mess. So I get them a little bit brown. Take them over here and chop them up. Fill up our pot for boiling the noodles. The noodles are really big, so um, you need to get the biggest pan that you can. If you don't have a big enough pan, you might end up having to break your noodles in half to get them all submerged. Salt your water, turn it on high, and stick the lid on it so it heat up a little bit faster. If it gets brown, you want to drain any excess fat so that we don't get too greasy in our sauce. I have like a, uh, an empty coffee can that I use for excess grease. With our hamburger. But you know, it's not reaching every business. The head of the Small Business Association says every hour another small business is closing. And even though there may be pent up demand and everybody wants to get back down. A little bit of salt. Garlic powder. The sauce I'm going to use has garlic in it, but you can never have enough garlic. Um, I sort of uh, got this recipe from my mother in law, and she used this stuff, which I think is pretty good. It's got a nice little flavor and just saves some time not having to mess with your own sauce. I have twice as much hamburger as I do the Italian sausage, so I'm going to put two of these in. Really, one of them would be enough for one lasagna, so you can get these on a lot of sauce. So I'm going to make a big one and a small one. Mix it up. Water is ready. So, let's get our lasagna noodles. Just fan them around. And as they, they're not necessarily going to fit inside the water at first, but they'll quickly become bendable and push them to where they're all underneath and you got to kind of 
Make sure to keep them moving around, otherwise they'll stick together. for eight minutes and now we'll start getting the other things we're going to put into the lasagna ready we'll start by cutting up some whole milk mozzarella cheese down so they don't stick together. We're going to have to use them fairly soon so that they don't clump together in a big ball. Spray down our casserole dish. This is more of a Kyle size casserole dish here. This is the only ingredient left that we haven't talked about, the ricotta cheese. Let's see how that goes on. The lasagna noodles are made for like a an 8, 9 by 11 pan. We're going to use a smaller one for this, uh, so we're going to cut these in half. Use a, a pair of scissors that I use as chicken, sh or chicken kitchen shears. Just cut it in half, and then you can fit three across a row here. And then the sauce. And then <clears throat> that's where we get our ricotta cheese layer. Mozzarella. You don't need it everywhere because there's going to be multiple layers. And then we're ready to put the next layer of noodles on. And then you just keep repeating that process. So that's ready to go in the oven. I'm not going to cook it for a couple hours. It can sit, uh, cover it up somehow. And now I'm going to do the bigger one where I won't need to be cutting up the noodles as I go. And this one's going to have the beef. That one had the Italian sausage. It's the same process. And we're going to put some aluminum foil over it, put it in the fridge. No reason to put it in the fridge per se, but I'm making this ahead of time. I don't want to, want to have it done. We're going to eat it for supper. It's only about 1 o'clock right now. So, cover it up and put it in the fridge. sourdough starter at this point. So I've got the oven at 375 and I'm going to put the big one in now and 
just because it's a lot more massive, I'm going to give it like a 10 minute head start on the small one, which won't take quite as long to heat up. So, at uh, in about 10 minutes, I'll put the other to be one. To honest, I forgot I was making a cooking for Kyle, and I uh, put these in the oven. They were in the oven for about uh, at 375 for about an hour, and then I jacked it up to 450 for about 15 minutes at the end to get the tops browned up. I've already cut this one up into 12 pieces. I'll cut this one up also. And probably I'm the one that's gonna eat this. I don't know if the kids like Italian sausage. I know my, uh, their mom doesn't. I'm gonna cut real big pieces. I did let it sit for about 10 or 15 minutes to cool before I tried to cut it. And now, for the most important part of the preparation, we are going to do the plating, which can be particularly tricky with lasagna. And, oh, oh, it's falling apart. It's falling apart. Mm -hmm. mm, there we go. Nice big piece of lasagna. Throw some overcooked garlic bread on there. And I like succotash, but no one else in my family does. So I have to mix my succotash on the plate. Corn and lima beans. And there we are.